Welcome to the Building Bridges for Adults second workshop on Buddhism. Let's begin by listening to this story from Zen literature called The Man and the Tiger. A man walking across a field encountered a tiger. The man fled, running as fast as he could go with the tiger chasing fiercely after him. The man came to the edge of the field. It was a cliff. He leaned over the edge of the cliff, grabbed a vine, and swung down against the cliff face. The tiger appeared above him, sniffing and pawing and never taking its eyes from him as it paced above his head. Terrified, the man looked down, far below to the bottoms of the cliff, to see if there might be some means of escape that way. But what was this? Another tiger had appeared and was looking up at him, swishing its tail and licking its chops, waiting for him to fall. Just then, two mice, one black and one white, emerged from cracks in the cliff face. The mice skittered about sniffing, and then with tiny bites began to gnaw away at the vine the man was hanging from. A little distance away, the man spied a beautiful ripe strawberry growing on the cliff face. Grasping the vine in one hand, he reached over, plucked the strawberry, and popped it into his mouth. It was delicious. Does this story puzzle you? Well, perhaps being puzzled is part of the point. Humor and surprise often appear in Zen literature. They serve a spiritual purpose, a relatively painless way, to jolt the reader or listener out of their usual perspective so they can see things a different way, which is central in the Zen pathway for enlightenment. Zen masters or teachers are famously eccentric, bizarre, and sometimes seemingly cruel, but their goal is always to knock people a little closer to the truth. The combination of energetic humor, as in Cohen's and the eccentric, even bizarre behavior of Zen masters, and serenity, as in exceedingly calm meditation, simple surroundings, and austere gardens, is unique to Zen practice. If you can't figure out the point of this story, perhaps not having a point is the point. Essential to Zen and to all Buddhist practice is the discipline to recognize when something is incomprehensible and to then just let it be. Be at peace with not understanding it. Accept it exactly as it is. Whatever is, is perfect. Another important Buddhist concept is the Bodhisattva. A Bodhisattva is a special kind of sacred teacher. In some Buddhist traditions, a Bodhisattva is anyone who is wise and generous and who dedicates their life to helping other people on their spiritual paths. Most commonly, though, a Bodhisattva is a person who has reached enlightenment someone who is free from the wheel of dharma, but who chooses not to accept nirvana. Instead, a bodhisattva chooses to continue in a human body, helping other people until everyone is free from bondage and all people are enlightened. The Dalai Lama is considered to be a bodhisattva. He is also known as His Holiness Tenzin Gyatso. He is called the 14th Dalai Lama because he is believed to be the 14th reincarnation of Avalokiteshvara, Bodhisattva of Compassion. The Dalai Lama lives in exile now, primarily in the United States. He is in exile because Tibet, where he was the spiritual ruler, was invaded by China in 1950 and he had to flee in 1959 because the government feared his influence on the Tibetan people. More than 50 years later, Tibet is still under occupation by the Chinese government. If the Dalai Lama were to return, he would be arrested. Bodhisattvas are seen as beings of infinite compassion because they could be free of all the discomforts, disturbances, and suffering of human life, but they choose instead to continue living so they can help others find enlightenment. This is a picture of Kuan Yin. Some people say Kuan Yin is an earlier reincarnation of Avalokiteshvara, Bodhisattva of Compassion, the same Bodhisattva that was reincarnated in the Dalai Lama. Martin Palmer, director of the International Consultancy on Religion, Education, and Culture said, the divine feminine cannot be suppressed for long. In China, it emerged by the transformation of the male into the female. That is only one version of the story. Many legends exist about Kuan Yin. She is the Bodhisattva of Compassion and Healing. She is seen in temples and art throughout Asia, but she is a particular favorite in China, where she is the most popular divinity of all, and her birthday is celebrated annually. In China, 
Kuan Yin is represented in art more frequently than any other deity, yet she does not always look the same. Here is some more information about Kuan Yin. She is known by many names, including Divine Mother and the Pearl and the Lotus, but a literal translation of her name is one who hears the cries of the world. She symbolizes a love for all humankind that is so great it can only be compared to the love a mother has for her child. Sometimes she is pictured holding a child. It is said that as Kuan Yin reached Nirvana and was about to leave the earthly world, she heard a human cry out in despair and she turned back to become a bodhisattva. Sometimes she holds a willow branch. Weeping willows illustrate compassion. They have thin branches that bend easily in the wind, but are strong enough not to break. Willow trees are associated with both Lao Tzu, the author of the Tao Te Ching, and Confucius. Kuan Yin's image appears in both Taoist and Confucian temples. Sometimes she holds a vase, symbolizing her infinite outpouring of compassion. Sometimes she is pictured with a thousand arms, an eye in the center of the palm of each hand, a thousand arms to help, a thousand eyes to see all who need her. You might see her holding a peacock feather, which of course also has an eye. Or she might be depicted sitting on a lotus blossom or wearing white to symbolize purity. The Dalai Lama, the spiritual head of Buddhism, was identified at the age of two as the 14th reincarnation of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of Compassion. At that age, he and his family went to live with monks so his preparation and instruction could begin. While still a small boy, he was introduced to the ancient Buddhist text, Eight Verses for Training the Mind. This text has been part of his daily meditation since then. Let's take a look at the Eight Verses for Training the Mind. The first verse. With the determination to accomplish the highest welfare of all sentient beings who excel even a wish-granting jewel, may I at all times hold them dear. Whenever I am with others, may I think of myself as lowest of all, and from the depth of my heart hold the others supreme. In all actions, may I search into my mind, and as soon as delusions arise that endanger myself or others, may I confront them and avert them without delay. When I see beings of wicked natures, oppressed by violent misdeeds and afflictions, may I hold them dear, as if I had found a rare and precious treasure. When others out of envy treat me badly, with slander, abuse, and the like, may I suffer the loss and offer the victory to them. When one whom I have helped and benefited with great hope hurts me badly, may I consider him with gratitude my supreme guru. In short, may I directly and indirectly offer benefit and happiness to all creatures my mothers. May I secretly take upon myself the harmful actions and suffering of my mothers. May all this remain undefiled by the stains of keeping in view the eight worldly principles. May I, by perceiving all is illusory, unattached be delivered from the bondage of samsara. In, the in this last verse, the eight worldly principles, or eight worldly winds, are these four pairs. Pleasure and pain, loss and gain, obscurity and fame, praise and blame. They are called winds because they move us about and can determine our actions if we do not cultivate consciousness and control of them. Samsara is the Buddhist concept of the process by which we continually build our world of suffering. When we learn to stop this process, we reach enlightenment. The Dalai Lama said, don't use what you learned from Buddhism to be a Buddhist. Use it to be a better whatever you already are. Thank you for listening to the Building Bridges for Adults second workshop on Buddhism. For more information on this topic, visit our Facebook page.